I always talk about how timing is everything. Now, yesterday morning, uh, we were working on that Devin DuVernay to running back video and how Ravens should really use him as an X-Factor, use him out of the backfield as a scat back and all that good stuff. Uh, so then we finished making the video, um, and then a couple hours later, Ravens, they released Le'Veon Bell, and I was thinking, ooh, ugh, this is kind of awkward. Uh, but anyway, it is what it is. Team Keep It Clean. So the Ravens, they... They've been having some busy days uh, over the past couple of days. Of course, yesterday uh, they released Le'Veon Bell. Um, it's been said that they want to bring him back to the practice squad. Uh, we'll see what happens with that. But they did bring somebody else on to the practice squad. They signed defensive lineman, nose tackle, defensive tackle, whatever you want to call it, Isaiah Mack. Now, Isaiah Mack is somebody who doesn't have really much experience uh, in the NFL. He's been on several teams, but really hasn't played too much. Uh, he started off with the Tennessee Titans back in 2019. Uh, he's also been with the Patriots. He's been with the Broncos, and he's also been uh, with the Pittsburgh Steelers. So, I mean, when you look at the teams that he's been with, he knows what good defense is like. So that's a plus right there. Now, um, just looking at his stature, six foot one, two hundred ninety nine pounds. So he's a big boy. Uh, and I got to be careful. I got to stop eating so much. I don't want to catch up to him. But anyway, with Isaiah Mack, um, more of the why. Let's talk about the why the Ravens signed Isaiah Mack. Well, of course, as you all know, like we saw in the Dolphins game, the Ravens did not have Brandon Williams. Um, Brandon Williams missed that game due to injury, and it's been a topic of conversation recently uh, with Brandon Williams. I even just was talking to somebody on Twitter about it a few minutes ago uh, because they asked the question, oh, man, do you think that um, Brandon Williams is, is going to be back next year? And it's crazy because with Brandon Williams, he's always the topic of conversation like every single year when it comes to guys who a lot of Ravens fans just think won't be back next year. Um, but this year, I think for certain that I think he's gone. Um, I, I think the Ravens, they're really going to be revamping and retooling this defensive line because they, they are, they're older. They're all older guys. You got Calais Campbell, who's been talking about retirement. So, again, when you start having that conversation, usually that's the end of the road. You got Brandon Williams with a huge cap hit, uh, and and then I know a lot of people say, oh, his play's been declining this year, um, but it's, it's it's tough for a defensive tackle because you like you're not getting all these sexy stats. Your job is to eat up blockers, take on offensive linemen. That's what you do, um, and it's hard. I'm not sure if there's really a stat that oh, I'm sure they I mean they got stats for everything, but it'd be hard to find a stat that really tells his story. Um, but anyway, with his huge cap hit and him being in the last year of his deal uh, and him, the, the biggest thing to me is that the Ravens always bring him off the field on passing downs. So if you got somebody that you're paying all of this money to, but they only play a certain amount of snaps for you, then that lets me know right there. That is probably they're probably going to be going in a different direction. It just in my opinion. In my opinion, and, and I really do believe, and we've said this before, that I think the Ravens, they just really want to get more athletic uh, on a defensive line and that they're going to want guys that can do both, not just st stuff the run, but that can rush the pass as well. Because if you can create interior pressure, that's better than even creating exterior pressure. That's better than getting guys on the edge and on the outside that can create pressure. Because if, it, if it's coming straight up the middle at a quarterback, oh, boy, it's, it's so much harder to get away from that. So I, I do think they'll go in a different direction. Because uh, Brandon Williams, again, the high salary cap hit, uh, the injuries here and there. It ain't like he's been injury prone, but he, he certainly has had his little fair share of injuries. Um, but the biggest thing for me is the cap hit. And the fact that he doesn't play all three downs. Unless the third down is like on the goal line or something. Brandon Williams, he ain't playing it. Third and long, like I said, passing downs. Nah, they, all right, 98. Hey, come here, big baby. Let's go. So he come jogging off the field. Um, but again, that, that's his role. That's his role. So can't knock him for just doing what his role is. Um, but shout out to Brandon Williams. Super great teammate. 
always high energy, always got people laughing and stuff. He's like a um, sort of a defensive Mark Ingram. I know that that name kind of hurts a lot of Ravens fans' hearts, especially when you see what he's been doing with the Saints recently. But anyway, um, shout out to him. Uh, another name that uh, that that comes to mind when with this signing of Isaiah Mack to the practice squad uh, is Derek Wolf. Now, Derek Wolf, Harbaugh said it a couple of days ago that he is officially done. That's a wrap. Derek Wolf will not be playing this season. At all, and y'all, t- I told y'all before. Like with Derek Wolf, I just, I-, I thought any anything when he first went down with his back injury, and then they it just kept lingering, and it was like one of those things where you know the Ravens they thought that they could get him back, they thought he could come back any day now, and they were just waiting because they initially they didn't put him on injury reserve initially, and then the Ravens were like, ah, right, you know what, <clears throat> throw him on IR. Don't want IR. All right, well, yeah, he'll miss the next three games, but after that, we can get him back. So then, when they designated him to return, it's like, okay, we're getting Derek Wolf back. But then, when the, all the reports came out that said he wasn't even looking close to healthy, he wasn't looking good, and then he got he was just still hurting. It was like, oh, okay. So I said, hey, if we get anything out of Derek Wolf this year, it's a bonus. It's a it's a bonus. And Ravens, they they have to plan for life without Derek Wolf. So that's another one who I could see him being cut too uh, after this year. Not now, obviously, but after this year. I could see Ravens moving on there too. Now, that would be very drastic though. Because when you think about it, like if Ravens moved on from, well, if Calais Campbell moved on from the Ravens. But either way, if the Ravens didn't have Calais Campbell, they didn't have um, Brandon Williams, and they end up cutting uh, Derek Wolf. That would be a huge shift, a huge change in the defensive line because those are your veterans and those are your guys that have been manning the the middle for the past couple of years. So that would be huge and that would be risky. But, hey, you got to take those risks sometimes because you want to get the most bang for your buck. And Calais Campbell, he certainly he's he's been he's been great for the Ravens. He has been phenomenal for the Ravens. Love him. Loved him when he was in Jacksonville. He was a beast when he was with the Cardinals. A lot of times I forget that he was with the Cardinals. Uh, but with the Ravens, he has been killing it too. So shout out to Calais Campbell. Um, but it's and a, and a lot of Ravens fans have been on the same page too when they think about the draft. Uh, when you think about the draft, it's like all, right, all Ravens fans pretty much say the same thing. Defensive line, offensive line. Defensive line, offensive line. Because those are where the Ravens are weak at. And, well, not necessarily weak, but they were well, on the offensive line. But at the defensive line, they just, they need more. In the offensive line, you know, they need a lot more. But my, my sentiments for, uh, for Derek Wolf this year is the same thing with Ronnie Stanley and Jawan James next year. It's the same thing. I feel the same exact way. With Ronnie Stanley... Anything you get out of Ronnie Stan, and I know he had a surgery already, but still, anything to, in my opinion, anything that you get from Ronnie Stanley, even next year, should be considered a bonus. It should be, because to to have to have operated on the same ankle three times, and your offensive lineman, oh boy, that's that's scary, that's scary, that, that's really really scary. So I feel like Ravens just have to. They have to plan for life without Ronnie Stanley, in my opinion. You and you have to have a, a good, back, a great backup plan, um, and just you, I feel like they got to go into next season just imagining that Ronnie Stanley is not there. And if you do get him back, if and when you do get him back, again it's a bonus. In the same way with Jawan James, now I know with him, he's a lot closer to returning to than Ronnie Stanley is. And with Juwan James, again, Harbaugh said a couple weeks ago, oh, yeah, he's running. He could possibly even come back this year. Now, I don't expect him to come back this year, though. I do not think that he'll come back this year, though. I don't expect it, don't think it, don't see it happening. If he does, cool, nice bonus. But you can't count or rely on that. So if you have players that you can't count or rely on for the future, then you got to plan for life without them. And like I said, if you get them back, cool. If you don't, then hey, great. You already had a plan in place. 
And I just feel like with Ravens uh, this year, this season, um, they they did a lot of planning this year. They did a lot of planning this year, uh, but where they fell a bit short uh, was with the offensive line. Just a tad bit short was with the offensive line. Um, now, I'm sure they expected um, greater things for Tyree Phillips. Uh, they did get Ben Cleveland, so that was cool, um, but more so at, at the tackle position. They did get Alejandro Villanueva. They got him late, uh, late in the offseason. Um, but it was early enough to where he was able to be at training camp and all that. Um, Ronnie Stanley, they, they traded away Orlando Brown Jr. I know I, I would have rather them had kept Orlando Brown Jr. and just let him play out the last year of his deal. That's what I always wanted to happen. But it, Adafi away has been great, so that's nice. Um, but I still wanted them to keep uh, Orlando Brown Jr. Um, and then I, I just wanted it to be where they do like a tag and trade. Uh, but again, un understand the business and, you know, like Orlando Brown Jr., his value at that point, it was at an all time high because he played both right tackle and left tackle. He was on his super run heavy team, which that did. Uh, it made him look a lot better. It, that was to his advantage being on his run heavy team because he went over there to the Chiefs and, and it's been a little bit shaky. He ain't been bad, bad, but it, it's definitely been shaky. It's definitely been shaky. So if if he had, I, I don't think if he had been playing the way that he's been playing with the Chiefs, again, completely different system, but had he been playing with the Ravens like he's playing with the Chiefs now, his value would not have been as high at that time. It wouldn't have been as high. It still would have been high, but the fact that they got the, the 31st pick, and it, now they did give up a lot too, man. <laughs> they, like The fact that they had to, um, e even with that, see, think about that too. To get to or to move Orlando Brown Jr., they got the, the 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 first they got the thirty first pick in the first round, so they got a first round pick, but it was a late first round pick. But then at the same time, you had to give up the player and you had to give up a second round pick and, and, and a bunch of change. So you had to give up a bunch of stuff just to get that first round pick at the bo at the bottom of the round. So that lets us know like nobody was really biting on that like that. And if that's the best that they got, and especially you, you trade them to a team that has been beating you and has been dogging you and whatnot, and that, that's the best you could do, that's, that says a lot about how the NFL felt about him as a player. So it's, it was just, I know I understand the business side and the risk side, like, oh, if, if we would have held on to Orlando Brown Jr., we don't know if that value would have still went up. It could have went on a decline. Who know, well, We'll never know. But still, even with all that being said, I still would have rather they kept him because it was a nice insurance policy. It was nice having him on the right side and then having Ronnie Stanley on the left side. And then just in, just in case Ronnie Stanley, if he went down, okay, Orlando Brown, you go back to the left side. I'm a left tackle. Yes, you're a left tackle. But I'm, I'm happy for him. I'm glad uh, he's getting to do what he said he wanted to do. So shout out to Orlando Brown Jr. Um, but this move uh, went back to Isaiah Mack um, and back to the defensive line. It's also for depth because we talked about uh, Brandon Williams being out with injury. We talked about Derek Wolf. Now he's gone. Um, excuse me. Your defensive lineman, you got Calais Campbell, of course, uh, and, of course, Brandon Williams when he comes back. Uh, but you got Broderick Washington. Uh, you got Justin Matabike. Uh, and you got Jelly. You got Justin Ellis. And, man, there was a play, I think, was it in the Dolphins game? It was either in the Dolphins game or the Vikings game where I just, because th these are big guys. You know, in the NFL, like, NFL players are big enough, but defensive linemen, these dudes are huge. And there was a play, I forgot which game it was, but y'all let me know if you remember, but Justin Ellis, he was like, he was chasing somebody. He was like out in the open field. And I was like, I said, okay, Jenny, go ahead, man. I saw that number 71 run. I said, all right, go ahead, man. Um... But anyway, this, this move gives the Ravens uh, depth. And you, you can never have enough depth. As we all know, <laughs> whew, this season, wow, Ravens' depth has been tested to the max. Like, to the max. We can't, we can't take any more injuries, man. We don't need any more. It's been so bad, man. Crazy. And to so many significant players, too. But anyway, um, this has usually been a position uh, where the Ravens do pretty good. 
at uh, drafting and developing. Um, you think about, obviously, guys like Brandon Williams. You think about guys like Michael Pierce. Uh, and shout out to him being with the Vikes. Uh, you, you think about, over the years, guys like uh, Arthur Jones, who went on got that big contract from the Colts. And I'm, I'm not sure what happened after that. I'm really not sure. Uh, but you think about guys like Justin Matabike. Um, now, recently, too, you think about guys like Broderick Washington. Still a question mark on him. And even with Matabike, uh, he's still looking to take that next step. Um, but I think that, especially next year, I think that he will for sure. Because I think next year he will definitely get tons more playing time. Like, tons more playing time. Because, like I said, I, I think this defensive line is getting completely revamped. Um, but then you also think about guys like... Dalen Mack. I wonder if Isaiah Mack and Dalen Mack, I wonder if they related. But anyway, you think about guys like Dalen Mack. And it just, I'm not sure why it didn't work out. I'm not sure what happened. But it, I think Ray, Ravens got a thing with uh with cutting their fifth round picks. They they got something with that. Because, um, yeah, Dalen, I believe they, I'm, pretty, I'm like 99% sure. Let me just, I just got to look it up to be for sure. Because I'm pretty sure he was a fifth round pick for the Ravens. I, oh, yep. Okay, there it goes. 2019 fifth round pick. All right, cool. Just wanted to be sure. Um, so, yeah, recently they've been a little up and down, but we'll see how it all works out. And, again, it's on, it's, he's on the practice squad. Um, one of their, their practice – I know Jeff Zrebic was just saying it, that one of their practice squad uh, players, he ran out of uh, call-ups. Uh, and I'm trying to think of the name off the top of my head. I can't think of it, though. So let me, let me just look up what, uh, what Jeff said and who that was. Um, oh, Khalil McKenzie. There we go. Say Khalil McKenzie is out of standard practice squad elevations. Uh, so Mac provides some insurance with Brandon Williams dealing with the shoulder injury and Derek Wolf done for the season. So uh, with Khalil McKenzie, with Jeff saying that he's out of uh, standard practice squad elevations, what that means is that when you're on a practice squad, you can it's, – it's very tricky. So I'm going to try to explain as best as I can. But when you're on a practice squad, you can get called up to the game day roster twice. After you're called up to the game day roster twice, just regular call ups, then after if you wanna if they wanna bring you up again to the game day roster, they either have to put you on the active roster, on the fifty three man roster, or they have to release you, hope that you clear waivers. Maybe that will may maybe what happens to Le'Veon Bell, but they gotta release you and hope that you clear waivers, uh, and then they can put you back on the practice squad. Now there's another thing, too. If somebody, if a player is out due to COVID, then somebody on a practice squad can replace that player on the roster without it counting towards their uh, game day call-ups. So they have two call-ups, but if they get called up due to somebody having COVID, then that call-up doesn't go toward their two game day call-ups. It is very confusing. And if you don't understand, trust me, don't feel bad. It's very confusing. <laughs> um, but that's what it is. Uh, it's taken me a couple of years to get the whole thing uh, ever since the, all the COVID stuff and whatnot and the NFL with COVID and operating with COVID. And it's just it's been crazy. But that's what it is. So anyway, team, keep it clean. Appreciate y'all. I love y'all. Thank you for listening. Um, and, and, and shout out to uh, Isaiah Mack. And we'll see if he ends up getting promoted, because uh, if he does get promoted to the active roster for this next game against the Bears, then that would make it sound like uh, Brandon Williams is still out with his injury. So something to keep an eye out on, and we'll just see how everything goes down. Love y'all. Thank you. And like hopefully Brandon Williams isn't any longer. I'm out.